Hi, welcome back to Call the TRC. Today we're going to do a 3 inch build. So we've done quite a few 5 inches and a few 6 inches. But today we're going to do a 3 inch build based on this. This is the Flywoo Ant. So it's, uh, I think it's 140mm dead cap. It's very simple frame as you can see. 3 bolts at the top, 3 bolts at the bottom. It's a uni frame. And then you obviously just get your camera mount. Just before we go on, so this is the third build I've done with Flywood products. The first one I did, the bits are okay, some of the bits were missing out of the box and the second one was okay. I ordered this one and this was missing out of the box. Sealed boxes. And so I've had to wait another 12 days for this to arrive from China. And really, they tell me an excuse saying that they've got um, new people started. And that's the problem. Well, I'm not being funny, this train's fully been in stock ages. But it's a last flywheel frame I'll, I'll buy. I certainly won't be buying any more. Because the quality control there must be absolutely appalling. And I know that people have other issues. Because I've read on um, Banggood saying the parts are missing. But they've not realised on the other frame that these parts should be in there. So anyway, moving on from that. So this is the frame we're going to use. It is a nice frame. We're going to put in a run cam split 2 inside here because it's a dead cat so we can have the props out of shot. So we're going to put the run cam split 2 in. As you can see it's got two 20mm mounts. We're going to use, well I'm not sure yet which props we're going to use. We're either going to use the Cyclone 3056s or the 3B4B3 um, HQ props. Not decided which props. We'll probably give them both a go, see how we get on. We're going to use the, um, I can't remember what it's called now, the FPV um, BTX. This is the one you can get from Unmanned Tech, and this is an 800 milliwatt one. So it's 20, oh, I'm sorry, this, yeah, it's an 800 milliwatt. This is 25 to 800. Uh, they're quite small, it's Chaos BTX, and I intend to mount that just on the top there and bring. It comes with both of these, but I'm not going to use this one. I'm just going to use the pigtail straight out of the back. So we're just going to come straight out of the back like that with it. So that's what we're going to use for that. The motors we've got are the Mambas. So these are the same motors that come on the um, 353, is it? 356? These are 1408 and these are. 4000 kV, so we're going to run this on 4S. They're lovely little motors. And the stack we've got is a Mamba 2020, so it's a Mamba Mini stack. And we're going to, this is the stack we're going to use. And as you can see, the stack's just going to mount in the back here, and then we can fit the run cam. Plenty of room for that. And then the receiver I'm going to mount at the top. And the receiver we're going to use is one of these, so I'm going to give this a go, whether I think, that, see how good they are. I've heard conflicting stories about these, but I want to test it out. This is the Jumper R1, so it is FR Sky's protocol, and it's, it's on the D16 protocol, but I've heard varying stories. Some people say they're great, some people say they're terrible, so let's see how we get on with that. So I'm going to go away and mount the motors. And obviously the difference on this one, the, the stack's going to be here because it's not going in the middle this time. So we're going to have to bring our motor wires down the frame. I'll probably cable tie them in. I don't know how I'm going to do that yet. Um, but I'm going to have to chop these wires on this one because these are going to be ridiculously long. And I've probably no intention of taking it off this frame anyway. So let's do that. And then I'll come back when I've fitted the motors. Okay, so we've fitted the motors. Uh, as you can see, they all need cutting down. But these wires are going to, you can see now that these wires are going to have to be brought around the frame like this and go into here and then these ones are just too long. I've put the ESC in and I've put the battery leads on. I haven't put a battery end on because I'm running some XT30. But what you'll be able to see is you can't get the capacitor. There's no way that capacitor is fitting in there. So we're going to, when we make the battery connector up at the end, we're going to put this into here and we're going to put the XT60 on the end and then hot sh shrink that into there because I think it's the only way of getting it in place there's no way it's going to fit inside that frame and also i've just realized that when i've tried to fit this stack it doesn't quite fit here so we're gonna to have to do some adjustment here on the stack for the run cam or we may just um stick the run cam down with double sided tape but we'll have a look at that later so i'm going to go away now solder up the motors 
get the motors all filled up, all these wires cut nice to the right lens, and then I'll come back and show you. Okay, so we've got the motors in place. As you can see, they're all wired up now. And I have still brought them around the back. I like to have my, I don't like motor wires coming out this side. I think it protects it as the crash as well. We brought them through, we put a couple of cable ties on the bottom and they should go under the stack for the camera. And the other thing we've done is we've put the capacitor, like I said, in line here. So that's gonna mean I've still got the capacitor running in the end, should give me some kind of voltage protection. So as you can see, it's quite a nice build so far. So now I'm gonna go away and put the um, flight controller on and I'm gonna probably solder the flight controller in place. So I need to solder the wires for the VTX, the camera, and obviously for the receiver. So well, there isn't much room. One thing I would say is when you're doing something this, especially with this smaller build, uh, make sure you check with a magnifying glass if you've got one when you've done your soldering to make sure none of them joints touch. I know they look close on this camera, but I can assure you that I've checked with a magnifying glass and none of them touch. One very important thing, they are fiddly when you're working with this size. So let's go fit the stack properly. Okay, so here it is built. I have missed the stage out because it didn't video, unfortunately, but you can see what I've done here. So as you can see, we have that, we've got the um, run cam split mini in there. Above it, I've put the receiver and above that, we've got the VTX. It is tight, this stack. And then obviously we've just soldered into the top. I, I couldn't recognize, I couldn't recognize, I couldn't recommend this, I'm afraid. I just don't like it, like the frame enough. I think the frames, not the best built. I think these screw holes didn't line up very well. But it's a nice light frame, I suppose. So we have inside here, we obviously have, like we showed you earlier, and I've put the capacitor in here. So we're just gonna check out the full weight. So the complete weight, oh, let's make sure it's there. Let's just make sure that is. But let's put the battery on first. Let's do the full weight, including the battery. So this is the battery I'm flying it on. This is the 450 4S. And that's coming in exactly at 230 grams. So it's not that heavy, it's quite a light, um, three, well, it's, I don't suppose it's bad for a three inch anyway. There's plenty of power in these motors. I haven't had a chance to fly it yet. I've done a little test over outside. I'll show you the video footage coming from the camera just outside so you can see what it looks like. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy enough with it. I just wouldn't recommend this frame because I think you can get better frames than this. And especially because this was 20 odd pound, I think. Um, I don't think it's worth the money. I'd certainly look for something different and everything's just a little bit tight in there It looks worse than it is. It looks like it's all touching each other, but there's actually gaps because there's sticky pads between there So yeah, not one of my favorites. We probably will end up um, Getting it taking it out of this frame and putting it into a different frame I think because I just don't like this it's a good thing about these things you can swap them about and the other mess about I had the camera that I had to fit in here, the run, on the run cam, this one, doesn't work. So I'm getting the, I'm getting no picture, but I'm getting the OSD on the screen, which normally tells me it's a camera or this ribbon connector that is faulty. And I don't believe you can swap the ribbon connector on this one. I might be wrong, I'm gonna have a look now on the internet if you can buy one, but I don't think you can. So I think this one's probably goose. So there you go. The other thing I wanted to show you is, this is a Jumper T16 carbon fibre front you can get. Um, these come in at around, I think this was 18 quid for the carbon fibre front. And I'd like to say it was a doddle to swap, but it was an absolute pig. It really is ridiculously difficult to do. You've got to take everything off. All the insides of the radio have to come out because everything virtually mounts to the front. But it's all done now. This is actually the original one. So this is the Pro, which is one I've been using, for, which is one I bought a couple of months ago. And this is the original one that I had a fault with, and they supplied me a new memory card reader for it. I've since gone internal module. It's got a whole effect gimbals, and I'm running it from the R9M, so I just thought I'd show you that when we were here. They just finished it off. So coming up on the channel, we've got, and I don't know if any kind of order you're gonna see these in, um, but we are going to do some mods of the Tyro. So the Tyro 99 is about to be stripped and put into a different frame and also have its camera and motor swapped. And the Tyro 79, I've got two 79s. I've got one 79 which is standard and one 79 
which is this one, which has the same stack as this one in. So this one is going to come out of this frame, but we're keeping the motors and everything, but we're going to put a run cam Nano 2 on there. And that's about the only difference, but it is going to be dim. So I don't like the frames on these things. I think they're over heavy because of the amount of metal they're having. So that's what's going to be happening with this one. But the 99 is having quite a bit of a makeover because that's having a... I've got a Cadix Vitell to go in there. And I've got some really nice motors for it. So that's what's coming up on the channel. And loads of other stuff. I'll show you things, but I don't know if you've seen them because I don't know what order these videos are going. So... You'll have a little bit of footage to see this coming up and then I'm going to have a flight week where I'll probably just have flight footage one after another for all the quads that I've built over the last month or so. Thanks so much for watching. Have a fantastic day.